Hi guys, it's Miss Linton again. And guess what? This is our final math lesson for the 1920 school year. Woohoo! But before I begin, I just want to share a story um, with you guys. <clears throat> um a little secret actually about mr mcgriff do not tell him okay so um it was uh miss luckman's birthday so mr mcgriff decided oh i'm a chef i'm all of that so i'm going to actually make a cake for miss luckman so he proceeded to make the cake like typical mcgriff he did not read all of the directions and um, he was all excited, pretty pumped about this cake. I myself, I was looking forward to eating something. You guys know I love sweet things. But um, needless to say, as I said, he did not read all of the directions. And then um, when he uh, got the cake out of the oven, it was almost like jello. It had been in the oven for over an hour. The cake did not rise, it was just a mess. So then he was like, um, why did that happen? So then he went back and then he realized he had no flour in there and then he did not put any baking powder. So um, as we begin today's lesson, um, the moral of this story is do not be like Mr. McGriff and not read all of the information in the problems. Do not um, be like him and not follow the directions, okay? So today we're going to talk about um, two-step word problems. And remember, um, throughout this, you're going to solve two-step word problems using addition, subtraction, and multiplication. And then you're also going to represent problems using equations and symbols um, for the unknown um, value, okay? So um, <clears throat> let's begin. Um, just one second, I seem to be moving all over the place here. Okay, so our first problem um, is a farmer has 36 peaches in a box. She picks 24 more pitches and adds them to the box. She fills more boxes in the same way and ends up with five boxes uh, with the same number of pitches in each box. How many pitches are in the five boxes? So Cody apparently says there were 65 peaches in the boxes. The question asks, is he correct? Explain your answer. So again, remember, like all great mathematicians, we need to read the problem not only once, but at least twice. So the problem has to be read multiple times. As we reread the problem, Again, we're going to go through and we're going to pull out the key pieces of information that's going to help us solve the problem. We're not focusing on keywords per se, but as we read, we're going to visualize what is going on in the problem, almost acting it out in our mind, drawing some sort of visual to help us understand what's happening and then solve it. Again, remember, great mathematicians also double-check their work. So remember that, okay? So let's read it again. <clears throat> so a farmer has 36 pitches in a box. And again, remember, as we did in the classroom, we look for the punctuations, okay? We look for things like the word and, but, okay, to um, pull out the key pieces of information. So the first sentence is a farmer has 36 pitches in a box, okay? So what is re relevant here? The fact that he has 36 pitches and yes, they're in a box. She, pick, she picks 24 more, okay? So she had 36, okay? She now picks 24 more. 
okay and what does she do with that she adds it she adds them to the box so part part and now the whole amount in the box okay she fills more boxes in the same way and ends up with five boxes okay so first she had one box in that box she had 36 and then she added another 24 to that box okay picture that and draw your picture then it tells us she fills more boxes and ends up with five boxes five boxes that have the same number of peaches okay in each box so she has a total now of five boxes how many peaches are now in the five boxes does she have one box no does she have two boxes no she has five boxes and each of the five boxes will fill the same way as the first box so a question again how many peaches are in the five boxes Cody says there were 65 peaches in the boxes. Is he correct? Explain our answer. Okay. So we are trying to figure out if Cody is correct. So again, remember, we want to um, write our answer sentence. Okay. And our answer sentence is Cody is, he might be correct. He might be incorrect uh because okay so then now so again remember we write our answer sentence that way it can help us to start thinking about the problem okay so now let's look at the problem <clears throat> so we know that there were boxes of pitches so the first box first they put 36 pitches and then another 24. So I need to add these all together, okay? So if you can see here, six plus four, that gives me 10, okay? So again, this is my one place. So 36, 30 plus six is 36. 20 plus four gives me 24. So I've written it in expanded form to make it easier for me to add. So now I'm in my ones place. Six plus four, that gives me 10. So I'm going to regroup to my tens place. So now I have 10 plus 30, that's going to be 40. 40 plus 20, that's going to be 60, okay? So for the total, and um, this thing is driving me crazy, I'm just going to take it out of here. So for the total here, we have 60 plus zero. 60 plus zero is the same as 60. Okay, so now that is one box. They told us that he feel sorry, she filled more boxes the same way. Okay, for a total of five boxes. So, so far we have one box. Each box we know is going to have 60 based on how it was filled. Okay, so as we proceed, okay. Um, the second box, 60, a third box of 60, a fourth box of 60, and a fifth box of 60. So does that match what we said? Yes, five boxes the same way, same number of features in each box. 36 plus 24 gave us 60, so each box needs to have 60. Now, it proceeds to say how many peaches are in the five boxes. So we need to figure out how many is in total. We could do repeated addition, 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60. We could do that, okay? Because remember, we have five groups of 60. Five groups of 60 is the same as saying five times six tenths, okay? Because we know 60 is the same as six tenths. Okay, so how are we going to do that? So then I'm thinking of what I know. I know uh, 
five times six ones is 30. So then if I know five times six ones is 30, then five times six tens would be 30 tens, which is the same as 300, okay? So here you have it. So now, Cody said, we're not done. Cody said there were 65 peaches. What did Cody do? He added 36 plus 24. And you see, Cody just pulled all of the numbers and added them together. Hence the reason why he got 65. He did not take into consideration that there were five boxes and each of the boxes were filled in the same way. Okay? So Cody is not correct. Cody is not correct because he just... Um, he just added all of the numbers, okay, 36 plus 24 plus 5 together. He did not, as I said, pay attention to the fact that there was a total of five boxes um, with the same quantity as the first box the farmer filled. So again, as I said at the beginning, do not be like Mr. McGriff. And now we see Cody doing the same thing, not paying attention to the key details in the problem. You want to ensure you're going through and you're double checking. Okay, so one way we could have double checked this is 60 plus 60. We know 60 plus 60 is 120. 120 plus 60 would give us 180. 180 plus 60 would give us 240. And 240 plus 60 would give us 300. So that would be another way to double check our work. Okay, so the answer would have been 300 peaches. Okay. Let's try another one. Akiko, okay, and Akiko is actually Japanese. Akiko has 15 trading cards. Thelma has four less trading cards than Sanji. Sanji? Sanji has twice as many trading cards as Akiko. Okay, so we're talking about three people here. How many trading cards do the students have in total? So again, what do great mathematicians do? That's right. We need to reread the problem, okay? We need to reread the problem and pull out the key pieces of information. So Akiko has 15 trading cards. What do we know? We know Ak um, Akiko. Akiko has 15 trading cards. Thelma, on the other hand, has four less than Sanjay. Do we know how many Sanjay has? No, not yet. Okay. So clearly we need to figure out Sanjay before we can figure out Thelma. Sanjay has twice. So when we look, so we know Sanjay has twice. The word twice tells us it is double. Double the trading cards as Akiko. Do we know Sanjay? Sort of, but we still have to work it out, okay? We know Sanjay is twice as many as Akiko, okay? So the question asks, how many trading cards do the students have in total? Are they asking us about one student? No. Are they asking us about two of the students? No, they want to know how many all of the students have in total, okay? So then, so we need to figure out, so uh, um, our answer sentence, okay? The students have a total of blank trading cards, okay? So again, here is your answer sentence at the bottom. The students have a total of blank trading cards. So we were given a Kiko. A Kiko we know has 15, Okay. Sanjay, Sanjay has twice as many as um, Akiko. So we could put 15 times 2 or 15 plus 15, and that would give us 30. So we know Sanjay has 30 trading cards. Okay. Now we need to figure out Thelma. Thelma is less than Sanjay. So if Sanjay has 30 trading cards, uh, we need to take away 
4 from 30. So Thelma has 26 trading cards. So these are our parts, okay? Now, the question asks, how many trading cards do the students have in total? So part, part, whole, okay? So all of our parts together is going to give us the whole. So what do we need to do? We need to add them up all together. So like the previous problem, I'm going to use my um, expanded form uh, strategy, okay? So we know Akiko, 15 is the same as 10 plus 5. We know Thelma. Thelma, 20 is the same as, 26, sorry, is the same as 20 plus 6. And Sanjay, Sanjay, 30, 30 is the same as 30 plus 0. Okay, so I've lined them all up, my 1s and my 10s, okay, to make life easier for me. So I'm going to start with my 1s, please, okay? So 6 plus 5, that gives me 11. I could put my 11 here or I could have done ten, um, 0, sorry, 1 down here and then a 10 over here, okay? But Miss Linton put 11 here, okay? 10 plus 20, that's 30. 30 plus 30, that gives us 60. So now our answer is 60 plus 11. That is our total. 60 plus 11, that's a piece of cake for me um, because I know I have 110 in um, 11. So 60 plus 10, that's 70, and my 171, okay? So the question was, how many trading cards do the students um, have in total. The students, and I filled it out now, the students have 71 cards, a total of 71 trading cards. <coughs> so again, hopefully that made sense to you. Okay, if you have any questions, again, do not hesitate to ask. So I'm going to project two more questions. I will read it once. Then you're going to read them on your own, okay? Again, remember, great mathematicians read problems multiple times, okay? You're going to reread it. Then you're going to pause the video, okay? You're going to work it out. And then you're going to come back uh, and replay the video. Sorry, continue on. And then see whether or not you obtain the same answer. So the first question. Alejandro re reads 14 pages a night for seven nights. The book has 316 pages. How many pages does he have left to read at the end of the week? Okay. The second question states, Dwayne buys four sets of baseball cards. Each set has 125 cards. <clears throat> He gives away 70 cards to his friends. Write an equation that can be used to find how many cards Dwayne has left. Again, reread the problem, pause the video, visualize what's going on, okay? Act it out in your head, draw it out, <clears throat> work it out, check your work, okay? Pause the video. Okay, thank you for coming back. Um, hopefully you guys have done an awesome job with it. Okay, so let's see whether you um, were able to navigate through the problem in a similar fashion that I did. Okay, so um, with reference to Alejandro's problem, we know that Alejandro <clears throat> reads 14 pages, okay, um, every night. So night one, night two, night three night four so he reads it for seven nights night five six seven okay so alejandro reads for seven nights okay so now <clears throat> how many um the question asks how many pages does he have left to read at the end of the week we knew that he needed to read the sorry the book has 316 pages so first off, we need to figure out how many pages he, had, he has read so far. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven groups of 14, okay? So it's the same as seven times 14 or 14 times seven, okay? So to make life easier for me, because I do not know my 14 um, multiplication facts, I'm not sure about you. So I'm actually going to decompose my 14 into 10 and four. You see that? Okay. So now I say 14, 14 is this 14 times seven is the same as 10 times seven plus four times seven. And that makes life a lot easier for me. Okay. I know 10 times seven is the same as 70. And thank goodness I learned my multiplication facts. So I know four times seven is 28. So now I need to combine the two. So that would give me a combined total, a product of 98. Okay, so 14 times 7 is the same as 98. But what does the 98 represent? The 98 represents how many um, pages he has read so far. P here represents what he still needs to read. We know the total is 316, 316. So how are we going to find out what he still needs to read? So again, remember part, part gives us the whole. So if I have a missing part, I could go my whole minus a part would give me my unknown part of P in this case. Okay. So 316 take away um, 98 gives me uh, uh, 218 pages, which is what Alejandro has left to read at the end of the week. Okay. So hopefully you got that. I'm sure you guys did. Okay. I know you guys are amazing when it comes to math. Okay. So the second problem uh, you were supposed to try out on your own. Um, stated that Dwayne uh, buys four sets of bas baseball cards. Each set had 125, has 125 cards. He gives away 70 cards to his friends. He's giving it away. Okay. Write an equation that can be used to find how many cards Dwayne has left. We know he has four sets, so right away I'm seeing sets of four, I'm seeing four groups, okay? Each group has 125 in there, okay? So again, that just makes life easier for me. Then he gives away, he's going to deduct, okay? Because he's giving away 70 of his cards. How did I get 500 for my total? Okay, piece of cake for me. I'm looking, I know 25 is like 25 plus 25 is 50, 50 plus 25, 75 and 25, that's 100. And right away I come, I think of quarters. I know two quarters give me 50 cents. I know three quarters is 75 cents and four quarters is a dollar. So right away I knew that the 425 would be four times 25 is 100. Then I have my 400. 100 plus 400 gives me a total of 500. So that was pretty easy for me to um, solve because I made the connection with money, okay? So now I had five, I had, um, Dwayne had um, 500 baseball cards. He gives away 70. So then what does he have left? So in this case, we know our whole, we know what he gives away, so we need to figure out what's left, okay? So again, part, part creates a whole, okay? So 500, take away 70, the difference is going to give us what Dwayne has left, okay? So, oh, um, and this is another way to, the question asks, how would we write an equation to um, solve his problem, okay? So we could have done four times 25, four groups of 25, and then minus 70. You could have also written 125 plus 125 plus 125 plus 125 minus 70. These are all correct, okay? So again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Remember, great mathematicians, read the entire problem multiple times prior to solving, okay? They also draw pictures to um, work it out, to solve their problem. A picture is worth a thousand words, okay? Double check 
your answers using uh, numbers or a different picture. So use a, an alternate um, strategy to um, work it out, okay? As always, um, Slide Carnival has been awesome in providing the great slide templates. Today's um, word problems were taken from uh, Teacher Toolbox and SchoolNet as well. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as always, remember to always do your best, okay? Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. I